Hello, everyone. Today you're on time, M. Good. Good, good, good. It's good to see you all in. Wow, I sound extra tired today. I'm sorry. <laughs> Try to wake up a little bit. Hey! Um, I hope we are doing well today. But yes, hello. Welcome in, everyone. Um, today, what we are going to be doing is we are going to be creating some Valentine's Day cards. Um, because we don't really have, like, it's not like specific characters that we're doing, right? I think that what I can do this time around, um, I think I mentioned it in a past stream, um, but what I can, hello, hello M. <laughs> um, I think what I can do, thank you, Pardeep. Um, <laughs> um, I think what we can do this time around, I'm going to do two, um, two Valentines, but I think what I'm actually going to do this time is walk you through more of my actual process um, for drawing something, because for the past few live streams, what I've been doing is I've been optimizing, hello Alyssa, <laughs> um, what I've been doing is I've been optimizing my workflow to make it as fast as possible, um, so I'm going to so I think this time around I can work more in my proper workflow, um, so you can kind of see um, a how I, I work a little bit slower when I work in my actual workflow, but you can see more of how I actually work through drawing something. So let's do that together now. We are drawing Valentine's Day cards together today, so I guess I'm going to run this one a little bit more like as if I was teaching a class, um, or there isn't quite, you know, a harsh prompt. It's more like, you know, kind of just doing what we want, right? So when we're working with drawing a Valentine's Day card, when we think about drawing cards in general, right, we are still just drawing an entire piece, right? I'm going to be using this entire canvas for one big Valentine. I'm actually going to put this into a folder <clears throat> if I do more than one. <laughs> Ats don't usually work in, um, in the chat for some reason. They're not great. Um... But again, I'm going to be using this entire space as a my canvas, right? It's not going to be um, just like a small area instead. So this time around, we're going to be working with this entire area, and I'm going to be drawing one big Valentine's Day card. If you're joining with me, you can kind of follow along with what I'm doing, or you can kind of do your own thing, right? But again, the things that I'm mainly going to be talking about within this live stream are like, you know, my, my process for drawing. Um, not quite the techniques because my, um, you know, all the, the anatomy basics and all that stuff is actually going to be this March. Um, we're doing March into the basics. So we're going to be going back into some hard drawing basics. I'll be teaching how to draw anatomy and feet. Alyssa will be teaching how to draw hands and, oh my God, it's hands and eyes. That's right. <laughs> I had to remember, um, to think about that. Um, but yeah, so that's what we'll be doing in March. So we'll be getting into that, but for now, let's do some Valentine's Day cards. So, as always, I like to start off with my sketch, but my sketch is about as fast as usual because I don't like to spend too long on them. But I do like to do a lot of weird poses most of the time. Right, but I'm still keeping in mind... I'm kind of going with the... I'm thinking of a Cupid's thing. Which is what I'm going to be doing. If you have suggestions for... Just general things that you want me to add into the Valentine's Day card throughout, just type them in the chat and I will gladly do those. Yeah, if you're doing, if you're following me along drawing Valentine's Day cards, you can draw specific characters. I'm not drawing anybody specific, I'm just kind of doing who I want. I think I'm, what do I think of when I think of? Valentine's, I think of angels. I mean, that's kind of why the stream thumbnail is the way that it is, you know. <laughs> think of angels, I think of Cupid. Oh my god, please work. I like to do a lot of weird anatomy. You know what I mean? <laughs> balloons? I can do some Valentine's Day balloons. Flowers. Oh, I love drawing flowers. I think I was already going to do roses as well. And because roses are very Valentine's y. When drawing poses, you know, I'm kind of going for a more dynamic. 
pose this time around. It's very, very exaggerated is kind of what I'm doing. I like to exaggerate my poses a lot. So can a person's body bend like this? Probably not, but it's a little bit more fluid looking, I think. The pointed toes. Waffles. Okay, real, real talk. What do we prefer, waffles or pancakes? I personally am more of a pancakes person, but to each your own. Whoever, who prefers waffles, who prefers pancakes? Yeah, I'm trying to go for a bit of a wackier pose this time around because I've been doing them, again, like the past live streams I've been optimizing to make them as fast as possible, so I haven't really been trying anything weird. Jojo inspired. I'm gonna be real. I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys. I don't like Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be honest. I'm not a huge Jojo person. You like both M? That's pretty epic. Is that how far behind the stream is? Oh my god. This is gonna be foreshortened, so I need to like figure out how that's gonna go but again I'm using this entire space so I'm starting off with this kind of angel character um, and working my way from there I think actually the wings should be more like this yeah <laughs> that hurt me I'm sorry Pardeep <laughs> we can all have different opinions on different anime You're drawing on the draft layer, and layer one is what? Oh, this is just the starting thing. <laughs> the thing that I opened up with. Don't worry, there's nothing important there. Hello, Elsa. Welcome in. Glad to see you in. It's been a while. Elsa is one of my lovely students who I've taught before. But yes, welcome in. Glad to see you in. It's been a, pretty, it's been a, a fair minute. <laughs> Jojo RB. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna be honest again. I'm not a huge fan of the art style. I think that's the only reason I don't really like JoJo. Um, I don't know, man. There's just something about it. I think that the art style's like a hit or miss for a lot of people as well. Oh, cute. Yeah. I've been trying to... Trying to go a little bit cuter this time around. Uh, how do I draw a harp? I don't remember. I'm gonna do one of these things. I'm trying not to go too fast because I know that like if I do that, then... I'm gonna get like tunnel vision. <laughs> hey. I'm realizing that I think this is the thing that Venti has. I don't play Genshin, but like that's <laughs> so <laughs> That's all I know about it. Oh, a trick for drawing arms, by the way. I haven't really done that yet. Um, if you start by drawing the wrist and the shoulder, you can draw a singular dot in between in the middle of the two circles that you draw. Draw a line connecting them and then a perpendicular one. And that's where your elbow should rest. Right, so that kind of gives you an arm that's more in... A little bit more. Whoops, that's not the tool I wanted. I wanted to use the lasso. Um, an arm that's a little bit more. I can't think of the word. Wowzers. Uh. <laughs> In proportion. That's right. <laughs> arm is a little more proportion. That's correct. That's the word I'm looking for. Yeah. I'm kind of breaking this character's back a little bit because I kind of want to do a weirder pose this time around, you know? Yes, Fenty also has it. Yeah. I already have tunnel vision for working out. You work out? That's hilarious. I don't move. <laughs> I sit at this desk and I stay here for ages. It's the life of an artist. I should move more, but I don't. Okay. 
I'm assuming that we're all staying in for Valentine's. I don't think anybody should be going out for Valentine's right now, to be honest. But another thing that you might notice is that I have been staying zoomed out this entire time. Um, a good way to kind of understand, I've mentioned it before, and then Alyssa mentioned it again, and I will say it one more time, just to reiterate the point. When you are working with um, kind of your full canvas and you're doing a composition, generally you want to stay zoomed out so then you can kind of get a view of absolutely everything. So who here actually has a valentine? Hilarious. <laughs> I like valentines for the cheap chocolate. Dragon Ball and Jojo. Yeah, here's the thing, right? For me, I'm very particular about art styles. Like, I think that everybody's art style is beautiful, but I also believe that people can have opinions about art styles, right? No art style is correct, no art style is incorrect, but people can have opinions, and that's, like, why art can be kind of scary. Because <laughs> those opinions can be scary. Um, but for me personally, I'm not a huge fan of, like, the... As, as somebody who does like to draw a lot of muscles, the whole, like, extreme muscles thing is not... Because they're very, very exaggerated. It's like that much is a little bit too much for me, I think. <laughs> Problem with digital artist back pain. Oh, I feel. Vouch. Hello, Emma. Welcome in. Another one of my lovely students. Kind of vibing with something like this. What is, like... What does Cupid wear? Usually, like, nothing. But I'm not gonna do that. Um, let's make it, like, a modern Cupid. I'll get some shorts. <laughs> it's kind of funny. We'll do that. Like, the boy shorts. Love in the post. Thank you. Hello, Comrelian. Welcome in. Glad to see you back in. It's nice that we have regulars. I think it's funny. Like, I recognize the names that pop in. I'm like, oh, yeah, I saw you a few weeks ago. It's like, oh, yeah, I saw you before. So yes, thank you for coming back frequently. It's nice to see you guys. It's good, good, good. Yeah, I've always found myself, um, well, I do like muscular characters. I think that that's fun, but like, I'm like very particular about how the muscles look and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, it's gotta be, like, a, a balance. Um, but for me, I've always found that I've, like, preferred leaner characters. Like, a bit thinner. <laughs> All characters sketched out. See, the, this this part's the part that's exactly the same. Like, I try, I'm, like, fairly fast. <laughs> regardless of what I'm doing. Um, but. You're also active on Discord. Yes, you are. Good day. Hello, Lennox Williams. Or Lennox. Hey, speedy speed. All right, because y'all are always so fascinated with how fast I work. Let me give you some tips. I think I've already said these, but I'm going to say them again. <laughs> Mirada Yusuke. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but because you, you all are so fascinated with how fast I work. Um, generally, how I like to get faster is I work with mediums that don't allow me to putz around. When I say putz around, like, you know, like when you're, you're sketching with a pencil, right? You're like, oh, I can probably fix this here. I can erase this here. I can blah, blah, blah. Right. I don't let myself do that. <laughs> or I, I, I gave myself a bunch of challenges so I wouldn't let myself do that. I'm onto the line work, by the way, um, for this section. I'm going to do a little bit of a background this time around too, for this entire Valentine's. I'm going to show you how to do some quick backgrounds too. Um, because you know, um, talk a little bit about that kind of design element, a little bit of that. Um, I'm actually going to turn up my correction this time too, because I want my, my learn work to be a little bit more precise as well. This is me working in actual speed with how I learn work. Oh my god. Oh, that's right. It doesn't like me using correction if I'm streaming. <laughs> uh, okay, no correction it is. That's fine. I can work with this. Um, but yeah, I don't allow myself to kind of putz around with that kind of stuff. So like if I'm drawing, then I'll work with a ballpoint pen. You can't erase with a ballpoint pen, right? So I'm, so, <laughs> so I, it's gotta be a one and done thing. Sometimes I would draw on a bus as well when we were allowed to, um, be on buses more often. 
um, or when it was okay to be on buses more often. Why does it not like me lining like this? It really doesn't. Like, it just... I need a new computer. Um, it's... <laughs> Woke up and chose Sonic. I did. Front look, looking kind of twisty. Yep, I'm being a little bit weird with my pose. Poses. Remember the last time I called you Jesse Quick? She actually speeds for, for the Flash comics. Oh, is she? LOL. I don't know much about superheroes. I think the only comic I've read was the Super Sons. Because I really liked um, Jorge Jimenez's work. I really like his art. So I was like, if you've never seen his work before. Um, I don't read comics much. Like, uh... Like superhero comics. Um, Jorge. Oh, nose. This artist, really, really good. I read his. Um, that's a Z. That's a Z, by the way. There we go. <laughs> Jorge Jimenez. Um, he's a really, really good um illustrator for DC. Um, I read his Super Sun series because like the artwork is so so good. Um, but yeah, that's the only comic I've read. In terms of like superheroes. <laughs> so the rest don't really interest me that much. Um, but yeah, no, I would just like, I would, I would draw on a bus. I would use a brush pen to draw people on buses. Um, just like randos too. So then it's like, I don't, it's on a timer, but I don't know how long that timer is. Right. If you're drawing live in like a, a live stream or no, sorry. in like a timed, like, Oh, this is, um, like, life drawing, then you you're you have a timer, right? You're like, oh I have like three minutes left. I have two minutes left. When you're on a bus and you're drawing people publicly, you don't have that. So you're kind of always on the clock. It's like keeping yourself on like a clock that you can't see is like another great way to kind of learn how to speed up. So A don't rely on a an eraser. B don't rely on a clock. Right? And something like this, I do have a clock so I can estimate, you know, how long something's taking me and how long something's not taking me and whatever. Right? But yes, lots of ways you can get faster. When you keep working with a pen, eventually you stop, you kind of like stop making mistakes. You learn how to do stuff on like one go. You can also pick up from other people's techniques, see how they work. I'm working a little bit slower this time with my lines. It's actually a fantastic tip. Thank you. Yeah, it's a. It's one of the few ways that I like to get faster. Oh my god. There we go. <laughs> and for lines, I don't know if you can notice. Um, one thing that I really like to do is have my opacity by pressure on but I still erase the ends of my lines afterwards. Life drawing is key for sure, definitely. Life drawing is so, so fun as well. I love life drawing. If you ever have the option to do a live model, so much fun. Nope. 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 <laughs> can't fake it on this. Oh, there we go. I can't fake it on this program either. Because it's a little more sensitive than Photoshop is. And that's fine. But like, sometimes it gets a little bit wonky. That's okay. Because I'm not used to how these brushes handle as well. Moodle, the old bus giant. Subway drawings are also in pen, but 90% of the people as you were sleeping are not facing me. <laughs> that too. The part I need the longest for is the sketch. Whenever I teach in classes um, to my students, I always tell them like, it, it depends on what medium you're doing, I think. In both, like, if you're working traditionally, for both of, um, both digital and traditional, I say that their sketch is one of the things that take the longest. Okay, I'm just gonna continue that way. Yeah. I always say, that, like, your sketch, for digital, your sketch and your line work are what take the longest, and for traditional, it's your sketch and your coloring. That's what I've noticed, anyway, um, when it comes to teaching students. And just myself as well. Yeah, ManyBang and Photoshop don't like it when I stream. Clip doesn't have this problem for some reason. Which is, like, great. But... <laughs> the struggle of that perfect heart. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
I love the little, um, little heart tuft. Yeah, I don't know if you notice my lines getting messed up every once in a while. It's, it's Medibang not liking me streaming on two different places. Even though she does this anyway, regardless of what I do. My pain. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it depends where you are as well. You might get chased. If you're drawing like somebody's kid, you might get chased down by the parent as well. Um, I've never had that happen to me before, but I've heard stories. <laughs> you know, you want to draw a manner of all people. Um, for me, my bus drawings would be people who are standing um, or on their phones, and I wouldn't know when their next stop would be. Thoughts on Obama? Pretty epic. We're not supposed to get political on this channel, but pretty epic. <laughs> Oh, um, I should also mention, um, starting in March as well, not only are we doing our Back to the Basics, um, we're calling it March to the Basics, so Alyssa and I will be doing live streams that are all about illustrating the basics of art, so I will be doing just general anatomy and feet, um, and Alyssa will be doing hands and eyes um, for the month of March, but we will also be changing what time we stream at. So right now it is 12 p.m. EST, um, is when we start streaming, but in March we'll be starting to stream at, um, 4 p.m. EST instead, um, which means that's 1 p.m. CST, um, as far as I know. I don't know the rest of the time zones, but yeah, so we're going to be streaming a little bit later for us. But yeah, so that's just a time change that's going to be happening. If you want more updates, you can check out our Discord link in the description. But yeah, uh, I'm not going to put up the ad thing right now, but I'll do that midway. Because we have a new thing. I think Alyssa already used it, but we have a new thing. <laughs> if you take your time to sketch the liner, it's much easier. Yes, but not necessarily. I feel like that the if you spend um, yeah, March to the Basics. Thank you. Um, I find that if you spend way too long on your, I'm like I'm a very clean sketcher. I know that um, Alyssa and I are both very clean sketchers most of the time. Um, but I know that if you spend way too long on your sketch, you're just kind of wasting time. So it's usually better if you. For me, I always say like um. How clean your sketch is doesn't really matter. Um, oh, there's something wrong there. That's not quite the shape that I want. This should be different. Um, I always say that like your sketch should just be something that you can understand. If somebody else can't understand it, that's fine. Um, but as long as you know where to go from where you started, that should be fine. That looks a little bit better. There's something else that bothers me here. It's like, I can't tell. Oh, okay. It should be, you know, whoops. Just make sure that you are understanding where your sketch is going, right? Could you include some shiny decorations like crystals and metals in their coloring technique? Sure. Um, I'm going to be making this a little bit shinier. So you'll get to see how I render as well. Um, rather than just a flat surface. Um, I said it in the beginning. Um, I'm going to say it again just for those who weren't here straight in the beginning. Um, this time around for these Valentine's Day cards, I think I'm going to be doing two, um, but I'm going to show you guys my proper drawing workflow, um, like the one that I actually do because, um, well, I can't do it exactly because I don't usually work in Medibang, um, but I'm going to be showing you my proper workflow, which means I'm going to be going just a smidge slower this time around. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about my actual techniques that I use to draw because if you didn't know for live streams, I like to optimize my workflow to be as fast as possible. But this time around, I'm going to actually spend some, a little bit longer on certain things just so I can show you. So especially like my shading, um, I'm going to show you how I actually work with shading. Um, but yeah. Thank you. No worries. Of course. 
Ah, uh, yes, tomorrow is also Wing Canvas's seventh birthday party. We'll be hosting two live streams, 11 a.m. painting with Arunia and 3 p.m. cartooning with Faye. Arunia is one of our other lovely instructors, and Faye is our lovely creative director. Um, so be sure to join them here on the Wing Canvas channel. Let's do one singles card. I can definitely do that. I think that's a hilarious idea. <laughs> I can definitely do that. Um... But yeah, yeah, definitely. So remember tomorrow we are doing more live streams in place of our classes. So normally I would be teaching tomorrow, but instead, um, because it is family day, we're doing a painting party. And also because it is Wing Canvas's seventh birthday, we will be doing extra live streams. <coughs> oh, sorry about that. Today's actually the coldest day this year. Ooh. I like the cold. Dropping off for a little bit. Hi, Koi. Welcome in. See you all tomorrow. Oh, hey, Faye. <laughs> hello, hello. But hello, Koi. Thank you for popping in. Seeing how. I'm trying to work faster with this line work, but Medibang's not letting me. Um, Medibang's, uh, I like the way that the, how sharp the lines are. It's very similar to a clip. Um, Photoshop's lines aren't quite as sharp as this. Um, its sensitivity isn't as quite as high either. Um, I'm completely fine with that. I like the lower sensitivity personally. But these lines are so sharp. Like, they're so nice. They're so... <laughs> Hope to tune in tomorrow. Yeah. I'll see if I can. Um, I don't know what tomorrow looks like for me. <laughs> yeah, but tomorrow is a tr more traditional art day. So we're not completely working in digital like what Alyssa and I are doing. Um, so it'll be more like pencils, pens, and paint. Okay. I'm struggling a little bit here. There we go. I don't really know what this thing looks like in real life. I'm not looking up a reference just because like of, in the sake of time. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be working a little bit slower. Also me. I, I can't. I need to, <laughs> I need to be as fast as possible. <laughs> Family. Oh, hello, Arunia. Welcome in. Um, awesome. I'm going to draw my family's chibi cartoon since it's family day weekend. Ah, oh, yes. Very good. Very good. Yeah, I know some people would do like other layers for like certain objects and whatever. No, I'm not like that. I know. <laughs> All one layer, my friends. This is how we do it. Single is the new future. I mean, it depends who you ask, but yeah. <laughs> Chippies, chippies. I don't draw chippies that often. Um, people will say that's a lie, but I don't draw chippies that often. I like to draw cute characters, but I like to draw cute characters in horror. That's what <laughs> that's how what I do all the time. <laughs> cute characters and nightmares. That's the that's the the what that's what I strive for. You know what I mean? Halloween is my time. <laughs> Fast as possible sometimes looks more confident because you have no time to doubt yourself. That's true as well. usually when you're working as fast as possible it's like it's like okay you gotta just go 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 um but you should worry about how good your work looks too <laughs> oh if it's unequal it's not even you know what i'm gonna do that like epic artist thing and like <laughs> i'm gonna <laughs> i'm just gonna you know what i mean like yeah <laughs> Pretty sure I can do this, right? Ah, excellent. Yes. Yes. Genius. All right. If something is equal, like ex like perfectly symmetrical, you can do this. <laughs> can I merge these two? Yeah, I can. There we go. Easy. Easy. Let's go. <clears throat> I'm watching from the sideways. Can't wait to see the colors and backgrounds you go with. Thank you. 
Virtue Charm. Yeah. Yeah, if it's perfectly equal, some people do this with their eyes too, if they want to like make them like perfectly equal. <laughs> do you have a color scheme in mind already outside of pink and red? Yeah. Um, I'm going for like pink, red, blues. I want some blues in there too, because I'm a very big blue fan. How'd you do that? So that is a horizontal flip. I was kind of putzing around with it because my workflow is a little bit different on here. Um, so all you really do, you take the lasso tool. <laughs> Do you have the mirror brush thing too? The mirror brush actually is not that great. Um, personally for me, if I were to work with the mirror brush, do I have it on here? Oof, I don't know where it went. Um, rotation, the symmetry brush. The symmetry brush is kind of stuck like this. So you have to go from like a single spot and then move outwards. So it doesn't work great for a lot of things. Um, but basically all you would do, you take your lasso tool, you would select whatever, hit Control C, Control V. It automatically makes a new layer onto the side. You can hit Control D and then just move this other layer around. If you hit Control T, a little bit menu at the bottom will pop up. Just click flip and it'll flip it backwards like that. It's a nice and quick way to do symmetrical things. The joys of digital. But again, only do that if it's perfectly symmetrical. If you're drawing the other eye and the character is facing three-fourths of the way, don't do that. Like, oh my god, please don't. Um, but if you're working digitally, if you're drawing somebody, like, you know, perfectly symmetrical from the front or something, that works totally fine. Or if you have an object that you need to draw perfectly symmetrical, that's also totally fine. It's not illegal if you don't get Emma. <laughs> Last time I checked, Medibang doesn't have a horizontal symmetry brushes. Oof, only a rotational thing. Yeah, it doesn't have a horizontal. Um, you need to probably download that. The only thing that it has is like the the rotational mirror, which is like not that great, personally. Yeah, there's no like proper symmetry brush here. Why does my line work just not want to work on this? Like it's not it doesn't like me streaming. <laughs> uh line work is so messy. I can't I can't vibe with this. You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry. I'm like getting a little bit antsy with my my line work here. Okay. I'll live with that. This finger is annoying me though. That would be your the mirrors tool is the best thing about Krita. I think for me, um, like I use Photoshop, so there's like a symmetry line that you can move around. You can use any brush, and it'll work like symmetrically. Um, so like there would be a tool up at the top, and it's like turn on symmetry, and you can just like have a line, and you can use any brush, and it will mirror it, um, vertically or horizontally. And then you can also rotate the line to whatever you want. That's how I would normally do symmetry. Um. I love painting with symmetry on. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, so if you have a better option for painting symmetrically, do it. It's a lot of fun. I'm going to show you a bit of my rendering as well this time around when it comes to that. Autodesk also has a mirror feature. Yep. We get what you're saying. Yeah. Autodesk also had that, yeah. I wasn't a huge fan of Autodesk's workflow. I remember I when, when I taught digital, um, I was looking at the, the program and I'm like, oh, it's all right. And I was using it and I'm like, wow, there's like not as many tools on here as I would like. Um, but if you use Autodesk and you can use it perfectly well, good on you. I'm just picky and annoying. So don't listen to me. <laughs> Mm, yes, harp. This is how you draw a harp. Indeed. Yeah, okay. I don't know how to draw this instrument. <laughs> There's a horizontal one, but you gotta download. Yeah, I figured. So it's not on the defaults. If you'll notice, actually, I made a new brush over here. It says square. That's what I'm gonna be using to render, and I'll show you how I use uh, that to render, because I don't use the airbrush to render. I use a hard brush. Um, on Photoshop, I use a square, square brush usually. Using a square brush to digitally paint is like a 
Some people love it, some people hate it. I love using a square. Oh, why is my charge just doing that? Let's turn that back on. <laughs> you can make flowers with the rotational symmetry brush. Yeah. I'm gonna do flowers later. I wanna do some roses. I'm probably just gonna do it without the rotational though. That's a tangent. I shouldn't have that. Ah, there's a there's a little tip for you guys. Um, <clears throat> when you're illustrating, you want to avoid something called tangents. Um, that's when two things align up super super perfectly, and you're like, oh, that yeah, that lines up like almost perfectly. You don't want that, um, because it ends up looking kind of messy, and hard to read. So like, say if you had like, I always use this example. Say if you have like a tree, right? Great looking tree, and you have like a car in the background right? The front of the car, say if the car lined up perfectly with this tree, right? This doesn't look good. You don't want it to line up perfectly like that. So either you got to draw the car away from the tree, away from the tree, like that, or you got to draw the tree completely overlapping the car, right? So you can't have tangents, no tangents, Tangents end up looking kind of messy, so we gotta make sure that we don't have tangents going around here. So this is a tangent too. So I've gotta erase that a little bit. You made that square brush? Yeah. Yeah, you can make brushes on Medibank. It's a little bit finicky, um, but it does work. Um, but you don't just create the brush, you gotta like um, go over here on this little button. It says from canvas. I, I know the little window doesn't pop up, but um, yeah, you'll see a little drop-down menu. It should look like a, a few squares inside of that piece of paper. Come on. Come on. Come on. Stop doing that to me. Doesn't like how fast I move. Mighty Bang's like, move slower. I'm like, no. You need to speed up. <laughs> Even if I move slow, it doesn't like it. It's like... I love drawing wings. It's another thing I really, really love to do. Um, wings are kind of hard, though. It's like, if you don't really... You should probably understand how the feathers work first. Um, I'm kind of throwing that out the window just for this live stream. Um, but... Wings. What does that brush do? Yeah, I know how to make one, yeah. Which one, the square? The square brush is just a, it's just like a pen brush, but it's square. <laughs> That's the only difference, is like, it's in the shape of the square. You really like Autodesk because you drew at night, and the entire workspace is white. It was always so bright, and I just couldn't stand it, but I like doing line art with Medibang more. Yeah. Autodesk sketchbook was like a, I remember when it first came out, and everyone was like, yo, this rules, right? And then Procreate came out and it blew it out of the water. <laughs> I am like, I've used some Autodesk product products, but like I haven't used, um, I tried uh, auto, um, Sketchbook, but like I wasn't a huge fan of it. Um, like I mentioned, but um, for school, when I was in game art school, I used um, Autodesk Maya, like the 3D software. And like, it's alright. Like, I don't mind it. I'm not a huge 3D f I, Like, that was my first time trying 3D, and, like, I wasn't really a huge fan of Maya, just because it was, like... I'm like, oh, 3D's so hard. Um, because <laughs> there's so much you gotta worry about, and I'm like, oh, this is too technical for me. Um, I say, as an artist. But, <laughs> you know. It's to each their own. I know people prefer ZBrush and Blender a lot of the time. It's kind of like how people usually prefer Clip over Photoshop. It depends on the person, though. Like, everyone has preference. Some people really like Maya. But Maya costs so much, so <laughs> it's like, you know, Blender is free, so it's definitely more affordable. I think Blender is free, if I remember correctly. Please show later on. Yep, I was gonna, that's what I'm gonna use to render. The square brush is what I use to uh, paint with. So we're gonna, like I mentioned in the beginning, I'm gonna do, show you more of my real workflow. Oh, I'm gonna save this uh, file real quick. You shouldn't be seeing my window here, as far as I know, right? Yeah, you can't see these windows good. <laughs> All my files. Um, 
yeah, I'm just going to save this file real quick. So you see my mouse moving around, but you don't see what I'm clicking. If you try to fill in the black background layer with a medium gray to make it easier on your eyes. Yep, you can do that too. Blender's still free. Oh, good. If class is always divided on like in 3D's max versus Maya, Blender is free. ZBrush is more like sculpting versus poly modeling. Yeah. A lot of my friends say that they prefer sculpting over poly modeling. I would like for first year, all we did was poly modeling. I found it really boring. I was like, <laughs> I was sitting there and I was like, nah. Um, my friends were always like, oh, Jesse, you should try like sculpting. And I'm like, I would, but uh, time. <laughs> um, but yeah. I know that ZBrush isn't free though. Blender is a 3D software. Um, pardon deep. So when you're working with 3D software, um, you know, like when you play a video game, you have like the 3D models that, so that's how you'd make them. Um, is in a 3D software. You'd model them, you'd rig them. Rigging is apparently super, super hard. Um, I've rigged really easy things, but, like, I haven't done anything, like, crazy, like a character. Um, I know my friends have done characters now. Um, but... Yeah, so it's 3D software. It's working in a 3D workspace. So working with, like, big blocks and stuff like that. There's a lot you have... Like, 3D is fun, but there's a lot you have to worry about. So I'm like... Yeah, no, I'm not a huge fan of this. <laughs> you can try 3D if you'd like, though. Um, Blender is a free one that everybody loves. Um, there's ZBrush. That's more, again, like Alyssa said, that's more um, sculpting, though, than it is polymodeling and all that. Check that out. Maybe you can make something. Yeah. Um, if you don't know too much about 3D, like, please look up a tutorial. If you don't know much about 3D modeling and anything like that, you're going to probably want to look up a tutorial because it's... I've seen no 3D softwares that are very user-friendly. <laughs> like, like all 3D software... Like, if you don't have any prior knowledge, it can get really rough. So I'm like, please look up a tutorial or something because it can get kind of tricky. Okay. Oof, I thought it'd be closer to be finishing this by now. I guess coloring won't take me as long. Shading might, though. That's fine. I'll just make the second card a little bit easier. <laughs> you can give it a skirt. I mean, I could. Someone who rigged a character until the movement was not, like, breaking a bone in about 100 places. It took time and a lot of nerves. Yeah. Um, in the game industry, a lot of people hate rigging and they hate UVing. So there's always um, spots to be a UVer and a rigger. Right? To be one of those two. There's always, like, spots open in the industry. If you actually like doing it. I think I'll try something without a tutorial. Sorry. I, <laughs> that's fair. I'm not a tutorials person, so, like, if I want to try something without, um, like, a tutorial, I'll just do it. Like, I... Most of the time, I, like, look at softwares, and I'm like, yeah, I can figure this out, and I don't look up a tutorial or anything. I just, like, putz around. And go like, yeah, I can look at this. Or I watch somebody else work in it. Not a tutorial, but just watch somebody else work in it, copy their movements, and I figure it out. And I don't watch tutorials very often. Like, it's very rare <laughs> that I'll actually watch a tutorial for anything. But yeah, no, I've like... It's like, how did I learn how to use Photoshop? I watched somebody Photoshop a like a meme and then I was like oh yeah I can do that and I just figured it out from there <laughs> same Jesse yeah I'm not much of a I'm not much of a tutorials person <laughs> I, I honestly love drawing skirts like I don't I don't get to do them very often but uh I do love drawing skirts I don't get to do them often. That's a lie. I do them all the time. <laughs> She's going on vacation while no. Okay, that's different. That's different, okay? Software is different from, like, exploring. Play I'm very cautious where I go. 
Like if I'm if I'm physically traveling somewhere, I'm very cautious about what I'm doing. <laughs> This is foreshortened, but it's kind of hard if I don't have like something like a. I may have to rely on shading for this one. Yeah, I can probably rely on a on a blue fade. Okay, yeah. My biggest tip for drawing hands and feet is that you should always draw your nails in because your nails are what will tell you, like, <clears throat> your nails will really help with perspective. Getting the fingers looking right. Oops. I'm back later. See you on Discord. See ya, Pardeep. Thanks for joining. Okay, I think that's lines. Yeah. Just double checking. Oh, actually. No, no, okay. Yeah, no, I'll just leave that. Okay, that's done with that then. Colors, that means there's a new layer. My color thing is exactly the same. It's shading that deviates more for everything. And then just hold shift. So this is a very photoshoppy technique. Um, you just kind of select all the areas outside of your line work and then hit control shift I, and then that inverses it. You can use the paint bucket tool, make sure that is referencing the layer, pick the color that is going to be the most prevalent. So it's going to be kind of like a skin tone for me. I'm going to go to something a little bit richer this time. I'm like checking on both my screens to make sure it looks okay. It's <laughs> sometimes a little different. Okay. And then you can deselect that and then click protect alpha. So now you can't go outside of this zone. You're stuck in here. You're going to have to fix some areas though, because there are going to be some areas that you've missed. You might want to erase. Just make sure that you turn off protect alpha to erase them. But yeah. Have a good one. <clears throat> oh, this is... There we go. And then from there, what you can actually do is turn on your paint bucket again, reference the canvas instead of just a layer. Work from there. Just trying to see what colored hair I want because... Usually keep his blonde, but I'm like, I don't want to do a blonde one. I don't work with blonde right now. <laughs> it's too rich. Let's... Eh, I can do that. I'm just using the... I, I feel like I'm using the color scheme for an OC of mine now. <laughs> oh well, that's fine. Oh, there's an area there I forgot. Oopsies. Yeah, using your paint bucket tool is a very quick way to get your flats in. Like all, like I said, I'm going to use like my actual methods and this is like how fast I tend to work with the first three steps, but then the shading is when it gets a little bit slower. You mentioned you guys double up as editors. What application do you use to edit your videos? Um, yes, so that's me and JC who edit videos. I'm JC more than me though. Um, I mainly write blogs. So we use um, Adobe Premiere. I'm just switching to Adobe Premiere. Originally I used, um, what's it called? Uh, Sony Vegas. Um, but the software kind of <clears throat> ate itself. So I'm like, well, guess I'm switching. <laughs> so um, yes, yeah, so I'm using a different software now. Where did the paint bucket go? There we go. Oh, my tolerance is all the way low. That's why. Let's switch that then. There we go. Much better. 
yeah. I was wondering why everything was being weird. Yeah, if you want to fill in a little bit closer to the lines, just turn up your tolerance. Actually, that should be a little bit brighter. Yeah. And a lot of the times you don't want to use perfect blue when it comes to or perfect white when it comes to illustrating. Again, I'm kind of sticking with more Valentine's-y colors, so a lot of pinks and... pinks and whatnot. And switch to a yellow, because that's kind of what I want the wings to be. Oy, okay, I'm just going to use a brush for this one. That's faster. Sometimes you got to pick your battles. What's going to be faster? Um... Because sometimes you'll find that just coloring in with the brush is faster than using the paint bucket tool. Which is kind of funny. Um, yeah. What does tolerance do? Tolerance is what controls... Um, yeah, tolerance is what controls how much your paint bucket will allow to paint in. Right? So it's how tolerant it is of, of, of other colors. Right, so if your tolerance is set to the lowest setting possible, then it's not going to be tolerant at all. So if I haven't, let's draw something off to the side here. Um, let's say that I drew, a, oops, no. Let's say that I drew like a circle here. Mm. Sure. Let's say that I drew a circle here. All right, if I tried to fill this in with a blue, like a periwinkle, with my tolerance set super, super low, um, you'll see... If I zoom in really close, there's still kind of like a white line. Actually, let's do like a dark color. Yeah, you'll see that there's still like a white line around the edges, right? That's with my tolerance set super, super low. But if I turn it back up and fill in, actually, let's turn it up even higher, right? You'll see that white line is gone because now it kind of tolerates. It's like, oh, that black is like close enough to this next color, right? So we'll fill it in, right? It's how like, again, it's how tolerant it is of the other color. I'm going to turn that back down just a little bit. So again, it's kind of reading these two colors and saying, okay, how close is it to this other one? And just filling it in from there. Okay, I remembered. Yeah. It is funny. Yeah. Tolerance is weird. Yeah, I'm kind of vibing with this now. Okay. Now we can move on to the shading. And what that means is that you're going to see kind of a new method from me, right? So kind of like Alyssa, what Alyssa usually does. Yep, thanks, sorry. Um, kind of like the same thing with Alyssa. Um, I don't usually draw on my shadows just like perfectly and then I multiply. What I actually do is I um, make a new shadow layer and then erase um, whatever the light is. But I do it just a smidge differently. So what I do is I copy this entire layer. Right, so I make an entirely new color layer. I'm going to name it this. I create a new layer on top, turn on the clipping mask, and I fill it in with whatever color I want. Right, so let's say that I want my shadow layer to be... Oh, weapons layer. Say that I want my um, shadows to look more like this. Right? I turn on my multiply. So now I have a whole layer of this. Right? This whole multiply layer, this whole layer, these two layers are my shadow layer. I'm going to merge these two, and now I have a whole separate layer of shadows and color. Right? So it's not a multiply layer, it's a normal layer, but now it's blended like that. This way it makes it easier, so I can add in um, extra shadows and stuff like that, right? And I'll show you what I mean after that one. But right now, all I'm going to do is start to erase all of my shadows, right? So this is a subtractive method. It's a little bit different compared to just adding the shadows. Again, not for everyone, but it kind of gives you, for me anyway, it gives me kind of an idea of where my light source is. So I think I'm going to have mine coming straight from the top, kind of like a top-down shadow. I just erase all the areas that I don't need shadow with. But my very geometric shadows remain the same, so I like to very geometrically draw on my shadows.
I picked up this method recently. Like, it's not like a... Big thing. Thanks. Cool method. Um, the only reason I do this is for, like, the step afterwards, and I'll show you. Um, a very, very quick way to make all of your shadows look a little bit nicer. Um, it's 12.55. I thought I'd be done this a little sooner. That's fine. Um, it'll just work just a smidge faster then. So I'm going for a bit of a top-down kind of light source. Remember to always think of where your light source is, right? No matter what you're working with, your light source is important, so then your shadows all feel consistent. If you want to draw a shadow back in, you just gotta pick it up with the... brush tool, your eye dropper, and just draw it back in. I missed a lot of areas here. Uh, there we go. Yeah, but now because it's not a clipping mask, you have to be a little more careful. And you can't clip it either, because if you do then you kind of get lost. Oops. Understanding where the planes of the face are, so there's going to be a bit of a triangle. There's a lot of triangles on the face, right? Kind of understanding where these triangles go. Very, very important. Sorry if I'm going quiet, I'm like focusing a little bit. <laughs> I actually think I liked it more when it was just like, yeah, I'll just leave that kind of mask so it feels a little more spotlighty. <laughs> How to learn the angles of the face, like the different planes. Yeah, most of it is looking up references. Um, if you look up like lighting face, you should be able to find it because there's like a lot of different angles that you can study, right? Um, if you just look up planes of the face, P-L-A-N-E-S, planes of the face. You should be able to find references there too. A lot of people use 3D models um, to do that. I know that there was a oh man, there was a 3D poser that I found that worked really, really nicely. I don't really remember what it was, um, but it shows you how different angles of the face work. But yeah, a lot of people use 3D models. Um, and what they'll do is you'll be able to see like geometrically how the face works in terms of like lighting and all that. It's kind of hard to show like without doing like a whole lesson on it. So like I'm not going to do that. Maybe I'll do that for anatomy day as well because I'm going to talk about the face and the body together. Because a lot of measurements and stuff but Okay, yeah. Like my method, my, my advice most of the time will be like look up references. Because <laughs> most of the time that is kind of all you gotta do. 
Right. I know that a lot of, like, young artists hate it when, like, older artists are like, you gotta practice. It's like, yeah, but it's true. <laughs> you may hate it, but it's true. <laughs> right. Like, how are you gonna get better at something if you don't work for it, right? So I'm just going to keep in shadow um, so I can erase that out later. 3D references, yeah. 3D references are always so, so nice. <laughs> like math. I haven't touched math in ages. Like, I, except, except for, like, basic math, I haven't done, like, anything, like, mathematically concrete in so long. I'm so bad at math. Like, I mean, I never used to be, but like, as I stopped practicing, I got worse. Because <laughs> I don't really need it anymore. So I'm like, like, yeah, half the stuff I learned, I don't really need it anymore. We're all good. Okay, this is bothering me. I might just like, yeah, I'll do my, my nice and quick, like just the hair shadow. <laughs> need to worry about the planes right now. It's not a complex drawing. Vector's calculations. No. No more. <laughs> I stopped taking math when I was 16. I don't need it anymore. Okay. So, I have my flat shadows done. So what this means is now this is where it all deviates from what I normally do. Right, so what I'm going to do is, um, with this new la layer, shadow layer, this is now you're going to see me working with a lot of um, extra layers now. <laughs> More layers than I usually work with. What SSS stands for over the side here is something called subsurface scattering. This is where I'm going to work with my square brush now. If I unclip this, you'll see that it... Wow, I'm just going to turn down the opacity a little bit. Um, you turn around. Because it should have, yeah, size by pressure, opacity by pressure. Opacity by pressure is on, but like it doesn't like working with it very much. Press and angle, which I know. Yeah. So I guess I'm just going to turn down the opacity a little bit. Oh. <laughs> Alright, that works. Wait, let's see this for a second. Yeah, that works. Okay. So for me, what I usually like to do, so SSS stands for subsurface scattering. And if you don't know what that is, subsurface scattering is if you hold your hand up to a light, like if you look, um, hold your hand up to a light, hold it next to a lamp, um, you should be able to see there's redness coming from your, around your fingers, right? That's subsurface scattering. And that's what makes your shadows look a lot nicer, right? So that's what I'm gonna do this time around. Let me just fix some of the shadows here because apparently, I have messed some of them up. So let me just do that real quick. Now that I'm zooming in a little bit more, that's fine. But your subsurface scattering is kind of adding that redness back in to your shadows. And again, I usually like working with a square. It's kind of messing around with me right now, but oh, that looks better. Kind of adding this extra red shadow to the edges of your, or this kind of red thing to the edges of your shadows make things look a little bit nicer, I always find. Anything doesn't blend as smoothly as PS does. That's fine. I can work with it. I think I'm just picky. <laughs> yeah, kind of adding that little bit of extra red, you zoom out, it looks a little bit nicer, right? It feels a little bit more like human skin. Right, so I usually have one layer for this subsurface scattering. I usually have one layer for 
extra bounce light and then I have one layer for light or highlights and whatnot um, and body blushing which I clip directly back onto my color layer. This is why I have one layer where I clip extra shadows onto and then I have one layer where I clip on extra like I have two color layers right so I can clip two separate things instead of just the one. So this is my real method. This is how I normally work. Um, so it takes me just a little bit longer to get slightly nicer shadows. I shouldn't be zooming in this much, but like I'm like, it's a habit. I'll zoom out in a second. But I constantly zoom out regardless, just to always check. And all I'm really doing is just hitting Alt back and forth. Alt is the shortcut for your eyedropper. So if I just kind of click the eyedropper back and forth. So if you've ever wondered how some artworks look just a little bit more like they're like slightly more lifelike, this is why. Um, because they're probably using something kind of like subsurface scattering. Subsurface scattering is kind of like a, it's a 3D modeler's term, but it's, it's apply, it applies all the same, um, regardless of what you're working on. There's a lot, depending on how realistically you go as well, you can get a lot more technical with this. Um, like there are some areas that have a lot more subsurface scattering than others, but... More cartoony artists just kind of put it everywhere. <laughs> it just makes it look nicer. It's kind of zoomed out. You can see that's just it looks a little bit less flat, right? It just kind of helps with that a little bit more. Oh, and it's also Lunar New Year's, if you do celebrate that. Happy Lunar New Year. Oh, and I will... It's one o'clock, so that means we're about halfway through. So, whoop. So, hello, and make sure that you follow us on all of our social medias. This is kind of like our plug hour. <laughs> plug at the hour. Um, so follow us on Instagram and Facebook, and check out our Discord link in the description. You should be able to see um, all of the areas where you can catch up with us and say hi. Um, yeah, and we'll we'll chat with you if you do pop into the Discord every once in a while. But we can't, we can't chat all the time, but we will chat when we can. <laughs> yeah, follow us on all of our social medias. Check out our Discord and join our little growing army of art nerds. The luminosity, yeah. Super noticeable on the ears, yes. Your subsurface scattering should be super, super noticeable on your ears, right? Because your ears are very, very thin. The areas where it technically has the most subsurface scattering are your your nose, your ears, and the tip of your chin, actually, um, and your fingers, the tips of your fingers. I just kind of put it wherever I think it should be. <laughs> I also like to add a little bit of bounce light. This one as well, so that's just some extra color added within that I tend to think looks a little bit nicer. Just a smidge. Just gives your shadows a little bit more dimension, I think. It's the first time you see it in combination with cell shading. Yeah, I like to, I'm very much a cell shader, so like, this is just kind of like the way that I like to blend it in a little bit more. Um, give it a bit of flair, you know what I mean? <laughs> 
Um, there's a reason that I do these multiple color and shadow layers, so I'll show you why in a minute. Um, a hot minute. It's too bright. This is probably better, yeah. And this is a little bit of bounce light. So when you're working with your bounce light, again, don't add it crazy amount. Some people will add another layer. Usually I would too, but I'm like too lazy right now. Um, but don't add it in a crazy amount, just enough so it feels like it has a little more dimension. Right? So if I turn this off, right, you can see the difference in how the shadows look. So this just gives it a smidge more energy, I think. Hello? wasn't listening to me for a second there. Double hello. What's happening here? Mm. Oh well. It doesn't want to blend for some reason. Uh, oh well. Maybe it's just different on my screen. <laughs> yeah, so needless to say, my second card just won't be as uh, extreme as this one. It'll probably be a little bit simpler. Yeah, just adding that little bit of extra blue is what I like to do. Oh, I forgot the wing. Whoopsies. Wings are fun because the um, feathers are actually translucent, so you can kind of mess around with how you want the light to pass through them. Right, so if you think of wings, right, it's like, it's basically like a hunk of flesh and then those feathers attached to it, right? It's like it will kind of pass through the same way that skin might. I love wings. Me too. Sometimes they can be kind of frustrating to draw over and over, but like, payoff is worth it. <laughs> I've realized that I'm kind of structuring this uh, live stream more like I would teach a lesson. <laughs> the power they hold, especially with pencil shading. Yeah. Oh, working with graphite. Okay. So here's the reason why I have multiple layers for different things, right? The reason why I kept my, sh my color layer completely separate from my... Shadow layers, let me just create some new layers. So this is my body blushing layer. So this is me adding on even more kind of like dimension to what I'm illustrating here, right? Let's make that a little bit brighter. So it's me adding on extra shadows and blush to the face. I might actually have to switch to the pen um, because it doesn't like I didn't turn it on. There we go. Yeah, switching to the pen just briefly because it doesn't like me that much. Right, so this is just kind of to add extra layers of body blushing is a it's a doll artist technique. Um, generally what you would do is you would blush certain areas of the body to make it feel a little bit more alive, right? So that goes across the face, goes on the fingertips, goes on the elbows, the shoulders. 
Could look so cool also on demons. Yep, too lazy to design them when I decide my demon. I spent maybe a, I spent maybe like two like twenty minutes designing the wings for my demon. Oh, I guess that's kind of a spoiler. Whoops. Oh well. Um, <laughs> let's hope nobody on here reads my. Actually, I know a couple people do. That's fine. Um. Yeah, adding some body blushing, some extra gives it your character just a little bit of extra dimension. Right, so again, on your joints is where you would normally body blush. So on your fingers, on your shoulders, your knees, your toes. So if I remove this again, right, it's very subtle. But it kind of gives the body a little bit more warmth. That's generally what I like to do. Wish I could have watched the whole thing, but I have school. That's fine. Yeah, we're changing the times so that it doesn't interfere with school quite as much. Let's go back to this one because I realize I forgot something here. So we're going to be streaming at 4 till 6 in the upcoming... In March. So we're going to try streaming a little bit differently. Like at a different time. So it doesn't conflict with school quite as much. And there is always a live stream replay. Yeah. Okay. And I need to add another clipping mask. Clipping layer. Oops, not protect alpha. Clipping. Um, for my highlights. Right, so you'll notice I'm, I'm working with a lot more. <laughs> a lot more layers this time around. So this is more of my real workflow, if I'm doing like a huge piece. Alright, so just some extra highlights. Right, finding out where light will hit on the body, so definitely on the top of the nose, maybe a couple on the cheeks. Let's turn that opacity by pressure back on. You can add some extra highlights on different parts of the body. Just give it a smidge of extra dimension. Just a smidge. More than five layers. I know. Crazy. My IST makes the live stream happen at almost midnight. Yikes. Especially with the basics one coming in March. Oh dear. Yeah. It's hard, especially with time zones. We did a bit of a poll on um, our Discord to see what time people would prefer, and most people did say 4 to 6. So I was like, okay. So we were all like, okay, I guess we'll do 4 to 6 then. Do a little bit of extra on this as well. I'm just going to work straight onto the shadow layer for the harp here. This thing. I think it's a loot, actually. I don't know what this is. Um... Because metal and shiny things do need to be blended just a smidge differently, right? Especially with metal, the shadow, the shines and everything like that are a lot more concentrated. So you kind of have to understand how those work as well. It's kind of hard without a reference, though. Normally you would always want a reference. I don't have the time to find one right now, though. Hey, yo. You're very talented, Jesse. Thank you. I <laughs> love the shadow. So colorful and beautiful. Yeah. Hello, Jay. Welcome in. Hey, yo. I'm working slightly more my actual working space. I 
again with more shiny things you have a bit more of a concentrated shadow so not necessarily like you don't really have to blend it in quite a crazy amount because metal shadows are very very you know harsh how blended in you make it is how much it will scatter the light and metal doesn't do that quite as much so it's just a smidge different when you are shading with it Again, it would be a lot easier to do this if I had a reference, but I do not have a reference and I don't have the time to get one. <laughs> but for you, you should always use references. I am just relying on my visual library right now. How's it going? How's it going? I'm doing alright, Jay. How about you? I am... Yeah. I was definitely not up kind of late. Actually, I've been getting back into Pokemon, but that's my own fault. That, no, I blame Alyssa. That's who I blame. <laughs> I blame Alyssa for getting me back into Pokemon. I will say that on stream, on camera, for everyone to hear. <laughs> I blame Alyssa and a couple of my students for getting me back into Pokemon. Because I had a student who kept on bugging me to get the Crown Tundra DLC. And I was like, alright, fine, I'll do it. And I did, and that was my biggest mistake because now I'm back into playing Pokemon until like 5am. So, <laughs> the call out, yes, it is a call out. I'm calling you out for getting me back into Pokemon. Yeah, if I zoom back out, it looks a little bit shinier, right? It has just a smidge more dimension. Right, that's directly onto the shading layer. <laughs> references? <laughs> yeah, I would normally use references, but I don't have them with me right now. Alright. Oh, let's add some highlights to this as well, because this feels a little bit flat. So again, this is slightly more painted um, than what I usually do for streams, but... All right, if I do this quickly, then I can fit in one more really, really simple one. Now what I'm gonna do, take my line work layer, protect alpha, and now I'm gonna color in some of my lines. Now coloring in lines just, again, adds a little bit more dimension to the piece as a whole. All right, so it feels a little bit, so your line work feels a little bit less flat. Some people get, like I, th I saw Alyssa using, um, changing her lines to a multiply setting um which is totally totally works too but for me i tend to just like to color them in so it gives it just a little bit more dimension all right so concentrating it to some areas where there is more light hitting it Again, still understanding where my light source is coming from. Pokemon will never set me free. Nope. Kirby will never set me free. That's the one that I'll never be free from. Kirby is, will, as much as I will love any other video game, Kirby will never, nothing will trump Kirby. The amount of Kirby stuff that I have. I, I love Kirby, guys. I can, <laughs> it's not funny <laughs> how much I love Kirby. Um, but yeah. Roping you into the game DLC got myself back in, so I'm in the same boat. Yeah. We both played ourselves. Let's get real. <laughs> you just help me sketch clean sketch to multiply. If I'm doing 100% opaque liner, I will. Yeah. I always do 100% opaque line work, so I'm like, I... <laughs> I have never used the multiply method before. Um, yeah, this is me just kind of filling in everything. Make it feel just a little bit more, a little bit less flat with the line work.
because generally uh one of the big rules of artwork it's like oh don't use black line work and i use black line work all the time um like you do what you want but um generally for paintings like this i wouldn't use full black line work um i like again that's that's a rule that you can break i just <laughs> You should at least know your rules before you decide to break them. That's what I usually tell my students. Know your basics before you break the basics. So we have our full angel here. That's kind of like the last step of what I would normally do, but not quite. So what I would do, um, close this whole folder, Control C, Control V, because you can't add clipping masks onto folders here. So now I have a full merged angel here. I'm just going to name this merge real quick and create another clipping mask over here to do the final step, which is to add kind of a fade with my limbs into the background. It, for me, it just kind of gives it just a smidge more dimension. I actually might use the airbrush for this one uh, because Medibang is just a smidge more finicky when it comes to this kind of stuff. I'm gonna have to play around with the opacity too. The same with this wing back here. Switch back to the pen for this one. All right, so this kind of makes it so then the Kind of understand where the foreground and the background are happening so when things kind of fade out it brings a little bit less attention to it oh you know what let's turn subtract on and switch to the airbrush yeah so again that's what i meant when i'm like let's rely on <laughs> rely on shading for this foreshortening bit. Yeah, it gives it a little bit of a, I don't do this technique super, super often, but I find that it looks pretty nice. So now we have the full angel here. Let's put this all into a folder once more. I'm just gonna name this something else. Instead of just folder 12, IMG stands for image. Select them all, drag them in and close it. Right, so now I have everything in one big layer, easier to distinguish. Now I'm gonna create another folder underneath here. I'm gonna name it EKG, short for background. Well, I guess I'll just keep it as it. Let's create a new layer in here. F for flat. Cool, neat trick. We'll definitely try that. Yeah. So clicking sounds like chewing sometimes. It's satisfying though. Yeah. Just a lot of clicking and clacking. So because I don't want to drag away too much attention from my main figure here, I'm just going to do a nice and simple background if it'll ever work. Oh, it's because I have white on. Um, oh, let's do the fill-in. I really like working with a lot of ceruleans. What? All right, guess that's not working. I'll have to do with the. No? Oh, it's because I have subtract on. LOL. <laughs> All right. So, again, I don't want to take away too much attention from the main angel figure here. So, we're just going to do a nice and simple. Blue background. 
I'm gonna lock this real quick. Protect Alpha. I'm gonna use a gradient. I hate using gradients, but I just for this this once. I usually obviously don't use a gradient, but I will do it this time. This way or the other way? I kind of like the other way. Huh. Actually, that looks kind of nice. <laughs> right, so nice kind of blue that fades into the pink, right? Nothing too, too crazy. Right, I'm putting my background behind my main figure so that it doesn't take over the space too much. I'm going to do some really, really simple roses on the bottom as well. Just for fun. But nothing, again, too crazy. Just nice and simple. A really neat way to make kind of like more fun looking roses is like just turn on your pen tool, pressure by opacity, and only draw on the petals. Roses tend to be hard for a lot of people, and they were definitely hard for me. It was like, what you kind of want to think of is like, there's a lot of pe petals overlapping each other. Again, don't want to take away too much attention from the main figure, right? Figure out what your focal point is, and that for me is the angel. So the roses are instead going to be this pale blue instead of white or red. Red would definitely take away too much um, attention. I could probably do the same thing up at the top here, but instead I'm going to use a pale pink. Oh, you know what? I might still use a pale blue. Yeah, I'm going to stick with a pale blue. Yeah, that's a little better. The best thing you can do for yourself is to not zoom in. <laughs> so then you don't focus too hard on details. Let's make that brush bigger. I think this rose, I like the, the way that I do these is like a nail artist technique. <laughs> like if you've never seen like those nail art videos on like Instagram or something where they do like, oh it's the fading, the fading nail polish and it goes and you know whatever. I've always found that picking up techniques from different kinds of artists is a great way to kind of translate them into illustration and figure out how it works for you, right? Like I use some doll artist techniques, I use some nail artist techniques, I use some sculptor's techniques, right? Think like different kinds of artists and you'll find that you'll have a, a wide range of techniques that you can have in a roster, right? How you work faster, how you can draw faster, stuff like that. Right, so again, a nice kind of simple background. No, I'll leave that. I don't need that. I could actually just... No. I'm going to make this a lot smaller. give it a nice border. You're just clicking shift by the way so if I just tap somewhere and then click shift it can create like a straight line. Right so this is nice and nice simple easy background so then you don't have to worry too hard about it taking away attention because your eyes are still immediately drawn to this main figure who is the most saturated. Right I'm just going to create a layer to write the happy valentines right. Let's just turn off the passive by pressure. Oh, you get to see my handwriting. Um, this time I'm going to turn up my correction because... Oops. Okay, let's see how well Medibang will let me draw this. 
and keeping it behind the main figure. So again, it doesn't take up too much space. I'm actually going to make that smaller. Anybody in here not able to read cursive? Your lettering is stunning. Thank you. Like, I, I, I learned cursive when I was, like, in third grade, and I was the only one in my class who continued it. <laughs> Happy Valentine's, right? So again, doesn't take away too much attention from the main figure. You could make it smaller so then it's like it doesn't get covered up. So you could do it like that as well if you wanted. I kind of like it when it's covered up though. Maybe just make it a little less covered up. Have you studied calligraphy? I have not. Um, I, again, I don't really study. I just kind of like see what other people do and go like, oh, okay, I can do that. <laughs> and I watch them do it for a while and I'm like, hey, pick that up and I do it. Um, so that's so beautiful. Thank you. Um, yeah, so this is kind of how you do a valent Like this is kind of my more serious Valentine's Day card. All right, so this one would be... Um, you know, and this is also how I work a little more frequently, right? I kind of focus more on making the shadows have more dimension. I focus more on the shadows having more di um, more dimension and the coloring and stuff like that. Uh, my coloring takes me a lot longer <laughs> with my normal workflow. Um, but that's kind of how I would do it. Um, let's do a more jokey one, though. We got about 20-ish minutes. I can do that in 20 minutes. Um, let's make a new folder real quick so I can hide this away. All right. Who was the one that suggested the... <laughs> I switch between cursive and normal like every second letter for some reason when writing. Five words look written in five people. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel. <laughs> um, let's make a more jokey singles card now. <laughs> for the meme. All for the meme. I'll use my avatar. I'll draw my I'll draw my person because I too am part of the singles club. That's maybe TMI, but I don't care. <laughs> if you ever want to know how to draw my um my little avatar, this is <laughs> singles card. Yeah, if you've ever wondered how to draw my little avatar person, now you get to see it. <laughs> she takes me seconds because it's not that tricky. <laughs> the majority of the population, yeah. Right, so something nice and nice and easy for the last twenty ish minutes. <laughs> what should the caption be? Because I'm like I have a date with my computer. No. I <laughs> Oh my god. There we go. <laughs> hmm, the joys of art. I'm gonna use some black shadows this time around, so I'm not gonna 
hard shade in this time. Date with Pokemon. I have a date with my Switch. <laughs> All the Single Ladies by Beyonce plays in the background. <laughs> hey man, Valentine's Day isn't all about significant others, right? Valentine's Day is the day, to, day of love. That's what it is. And there's lots of different types of love, you know? There's like romantic love, there's family love, there's friends love, right? It's a complex thing and we can all love different things. Hug your fish for me. Pat the bowl. <sighs> Pat your dogs for me. Pat your cats. Play with your pets. <laughs> You're gonna try yourself holding a Switch TVH. Um, I think I was just gonna draw my laptop on the ground here. I have a date with the recordings of my lectures. Oh, you know what? Here's an incentive to join our Discord. I'll post this up. I'll have, I'll post like a thing. I'll use the text tool for once. Um, I'll post up like a. I'm gonna put up like a. I have a date with blank, and then you can fill it in yourself, and then you can post it up and see what you say. I'll show. I'll I'll do it in a second. I'll show you. Um, but it'll be like a fill in the blanks thing, and you can you can. Do with this what you will. <laughs> oh, that's so much easier. I <laughs> just turn up my correction. Watching the great snob race. Ah yes, Alyssa and I both have Pokemon Brain Rot. We were talking about um watching Snom's race. It's like the, the if you don't know what a Snom is, look it up. It's great. Um, it's like kind of the same energy as watching Snail's race. <laughs> watching the great Snom race. I bet if you just find like two wild Snoms, you can see how fast they would go. You know, or if you go into like the Arctic Tundra or the not the art, sorry, the crown tundra or a. Uh... Yeah, there's a bunch of wild snobs in crown tundra. You could probably watch them <laughs> chase each other. <laughs> Hello again, welcome back, Pardeep. Oh, I guess you didn't see the finished one from the last one. So we finished this one. Um... But yeah, we finished this card. So now we're working on more of a jokey one for the singles <laughs> with our remaining 20 ish minutes. Yes, welcome back. Glad to have you back. I think the only thing, like, I, Medibang's a great program, but I think the only thing that I don't like is, like, well, there's a couple things. I don't like the text tool. I don't really like how it um, transfers over the the correction onto your eraser and your brush. I feel like it should be separate. Um, that's just me, though. Like, I feel like it should have, like, correction for your brush and then correction for your eraser instead of both, like, in the same boat. Like, I don't want correction on my eraser ever. But it's... Hold up. Looks great, thank you. <laughs> yes, if you've ever wondered how I draw my, my little avatar, that's how it that's how it goes. Okay, so let's just color this in real quick. So we're going to go back to working with five layers for this one. Because <laughs> this one's not that hard. Um, 
preference layer, fill it all in white, and turn on protect alpha. And now we can reference, go back to referencing the canvas with our paint bucket. The paint bucket does work a lot better in Medibang than it does in Photoshop though, that I will say. <laughs> Photoshop's paint bucket tool is not great. <laughs> like, yeah, it's there and I can I can tarp tolerance and everything and it still works, but it's not as smooth as many bangs is. The only thing with Medibang's, um, paint bucket is it doesn't have, like, contiguous and all that. But that's fine. I think that's a Photoshop thing regardless. Oh, and also, the color that, I'm gonna tell you guys a secret. The color that my avatar is on, a the colored hair of my avatar isn't a hair color is anymore. Um, but... Like, I want to redye it just pink and yellow, but I'll do that eventually. <laughs> I have had dyed hair since I was 12. So I guess I'll just use my more accurate hair color. And it's pink, so it'll match Valentine's Day. Not bothering to blend it in this time around either. I'm just adding some light shadows, nothing too crazy. Hmm, yes. I'm not even gonna do a new layer for it either, because there's not many. Pink and yellow is great, yeah. And add in a little bit of highlights, just to add just a smidge of dimension. I mean, I could just leave it black, blank. <laughs> yes, the background for this one. It's just going to be straight pink. Reference the layer. So again, this is more of a jokey one. <laughs> Give it to your friends. Let's actually make this more of like a terrible eye blistering pink, yeah. Let's go. <laughs> no, I can't move more than, okay, that's fine. Okay. You can't see the pop-up right now. There is a pop-up that pops up when you work with the, uh, there we go. There's a pop-up when you are working with the text tool, right? And it'll show up. Actually, let's make that black. Cause I'm, I'm handling, I'm making sure that my graphic design skills are terrible for this one. can't see. <laughs> oh, well, I guess you can. It's just like, you gotta move it out of the way. <laughs> Was it 48? I can make it to 36, maybe. Yeah. Cool. 
be your own Valentine. Yeah, you will. <laughs> I guess I don't really need to put this in here. Yeah, let's do something else. Like, like, um, I have a table. <laughs> yeah. There we go. <laughs> Graphic design is my passion. <laughs> Change this time. into here there we go beautiful from wing canvas to you <laughs> mm. Excellent. So, here's some incentive to join the Discord. I'll post this up. You can download it. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I, can, I can post this up. You can download it. Write whatever you want on it. It's all yours. You don't even need to give me credits. This is the one the one thing that I will allow you to repost without credit. Um, but, yes. So, there we go. We have more of a jokey valentine along with an actual Valentine's Day card. Right? So the <laughs> this wasn't really a tutorial for this one. It was just like, yeah, I want to do this. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's going to do it for this live stream. <laughs> that's going to do it for this live stream, guys. It's about um, eight minutes till, or seven minutes until two, but I can't really fit in anything in seven minutes, no matter how speedy I am. Um, but thanks so much for joining, guys. Um, again, I will, um, in the Discord, I will post up both of these high resolution so you can download them, use them as you wish. Um, so this is, again, the more serious one. This is the less serious one. Um, they will both be up in the Discord for you to download and use however you wish. Give to your friends, give to your significant others if you actually have one. Um, print out, stick it on your wall, I don't care. Um, but, yes, thanks so much for joining, guys. Again, don't forget to come and say hi to us on the Discord if you have not joined. Um, or follow us on Instagram and Facebook to... Uh, you know, keep up with Wing Canvas's news, um, and you can check out our classes on our website, right, that I teach and Alyssa teaches. Um, but yeah, thanks for sharing with us. No problem. Thanks for staying with me for the duration of the, um, live stream. But yeah, thanks so much for joining everyone, and, um, Alyssa will see you next week. Bye-bye!